Hi there, this is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and welcome to the 17th Q&A session and here I'll answer some of your tech related questions. So let's get away with this. Uh, again, I have a bunch of questions ranging from PC motherboards, chips to mobiles. So let's get started. And the first question comes from Bipender Kumar and he asks uh, me, I request you to review or tell me about the Asus P8 Z77 VLX motherboard. Uh, waiting for your reply. Please uh, reply, sir. Is this a good motherboard under 11,000 rupees for gaming with Intel Core i5-3475, this is an Ivy Bridge processor, or the 3570K processor with NVIDIA GTX 550 Ti graphic card? Bupinder, yes, this is a great motherboard and it can be used for overclocking also. And uh, everything is fine, but the only thing I have uh, against is that you mentioned that you're going to use the NVIDIA GTX 550 Ti graphic card. I would not suggest that one. Instead of that, you can just up uh, your budget for about a thousand bucks or so. You can get the AMD Radeon uh, 7770 graphic card and I feel that would be a better combo. I hope this info helps. And the next question comes from XX, Nate River X, and he asks me, Hi Ranjit, wow, your videos have been really helpful. Thanks. Uh, it's good to have people like you. I'm planning to get a new Android phone. I have a Galaxy Mini and I'm leaning uh, for a Galaxy Ace 2. Do you think it's a good phone? I uh, don't like Sony Xperia U as the storage is a necessity for me. I'm looking in the range of rupees 20,000. Thanks a lot. Uh, Yes, uh, the thing is Samsung Galaxy Ace 2. Uh, I have uh, checked the specs of this phone. The specs looks really impressive. The problem is that this phone hasn't been launched yet in India and I did not get a chance to play around th with this phone. So I cannot comment about this phone right away. And I also have no idea if Samsung India is going to launch it or not because uh, this model internationally has been launched quite a while ago. And uh, regarding other choices uh, in the 20,000 uh, bracket, I would seriously suggest the Samsung uh, uh, S Advance or the Atrix 2. Both of these phones are very good, but around 21,000 or so. And the next question comes from Tushar Chauhan and he asks me, Hey Ranjit, I want to buy a gaming console. Should I wait for the next generation consoles? Do you have any idea when are they going to launch or should I buy the current ones? That's the Xbox uh, 360 or the PS3. Yes, the next generation of gaming consoles, both by Microsoft and PlayStation are going to launch next year. That's 2013. No dates have been announced, but uh, I am uh, uh, expecting that it will be after the second quarter of 2013. So again, it's now up to you. If you can wait for almost a year, you can uh, get these new generation console. But if you can't get the current gen consoles, I hope this info helps. And uh, the next, uh, this is a statement by Urman uh, 89. And this is regarding the Nexus 7 tablet. And he mentions that Nexus 7 is also available in India through India Shopping Times website for about 16,000 rupees. Yes, Urman, I know that uh, Nexus 7 is uh, available on the Shopping India Times website. And uh, but the problem is that it's not being officially sold. So I am a little bit wary about the warranty of that. But again, as I have been a sucker, I went ahead to this India time shopping and ordered an Nexus 7. There was some offer going on. The retail price for 8 GB was 16,400 or something like that. And I got a deal, a coupon deal, and I ordered it for about uh, roughly about 14,800 or so. But the problem is that uh, it's going to only be shipped uh, about 10 days from now. I'll let you know uh, how it performs. But again, I do not think uh, you will get official warranty if you buy from sites like these. The next question comes from Park ATG and uh, he uh, asks me, I have a HP Pavilion laptop DV63050TX and it has 1 GB 5650 HD graphic cards. Is it possible to upgrade my graphic card? If yes, then please tell me what upgrades are supported. If not, uh, is there any external way to do it? And are the second or the third generation i5 uh, processor better than the first generation i7? Uh, I wouldn't say that, uh, coming to the last part, I wouldn't say that the first generation i7 will beat the current generation of i5 processors. I do not recall if I have answered this question because I get a similar question almost every week. But my general suggestion is that you cannot upgrade and it's not advisable to upgrade components on your laptop. Because the problem is that uh, though you can replace the chip, let's say the i3 from i5, the problem is that the laptop when it was uh, made and designed, other components like the power and the thermals were designed for the original chip, for example, the i3. And now if you replace it with the i5 or i7, 
uh, the power ratio will get distorted and you can have serious problem again this also applies for graphic card for example let's say your uh, laptop has a nvidia 520 mobile graphic cards and now if you want to upgrade to 560 you can't do the same because your uh, laptop's uh, PSU will not be able to handle the same. So generally, uh, the only component that you can generally upgrade in your laptops is the RAM. Other things like uh, upgrading the graphic card and the processor is not recommended. And the next question comes from Aquil Blaze. Uh, hey Ranjit, I do see Gigabyte GA Z77 DA D3H uh, motherboard and I want to know, will it support the Ivy Bridge processor or not? Uh, Acryl, uh, the thing is that any Z77 based chipset motherboard will support the Ivy Bridge chips as well as the Sandy Bridge chips. So you are safe with the same. And the next question comes from Abhim7 and he asks me, since Android is an open source and it's becoming very popular now, then why Nokia doesn't make uh, Android phones? The thing is that last year Nokia decided to use the Windows phone as their OS. Uh, again, uh, it's the Nokia's management that uh, they have decided to go with the same. So I do not see that they're going to make Android phones. I would love to see, and uh, what do you say, Nokia make Android phones because the hardware that uh, Nokia uh, makes is very good, but sadly it's not going to happen. Uh, they're going to stick with uh, Windows uh, phone. And the next question comes from John Smith. Uh, Sir, uh, can you please review the Ma Micromax Funbook tablet because I want to buy it and please can you tell me the display is good or not because the main purpose of buying the tablet is I want to play HD games on the same. Uh, I cannot guarantee if I'm going to review this Funbook but yes, I'm going to review shortly some budget oriented tablets so stay tuned to my channel for more info regarding that. Hi Ranjit, which is better? ARM 6, uh, ARM V6, ARM 11, 830 MHz He's mentioning about Galaxy Y Android phone. I uh, don't know about the GPU he mentions or the 600 megahertz ARM V7 Cortex A5 HTC Explorer phone with the Adreno 200. I have mentioned about this earlier also and I would say that the HTC Explorer is a much better phone than this, what do you say, the Galaxy Y because of the GPU. Again, I would just want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, what to look uh, when you're buying a budget Android phone. The most important thing is look at the amount of RAM that the phone has. The second important thing that you need to look is, does it have a dedicated GPU? It is pretty important for an Android phone. The ex entire experience will be a lot more fluid if it has a dedicated GPU. And the third thing that you need to look is the amount of internal storage that is uh, uh, reserved for the apps. So look at these three points when you're choosing a budget Android phone. And uh, he also uh, continues, suggest a good Android phone for the same budget. What about LG L5? Uh, I I'm sorry, but I did not review the LG L5. And uh, I'm going to review a quite a few uh, other budget oriented Android phones. So stay tuned to my channel for more info regarding that. I hope this info helps. And the next question comes from Srikanth Nair. And he asked me, uh, third generation i5 versus second generation i7 which is better not for gaming i would definitely go with the i7 again it depends upon the kind of work that i'm doing if i'm going to do uh, heavy tasks like video rendering or audio uh, encoding or ripping or stuff definitely the i7 uh, uh, will help because of the hyper threading but again if i'm looking at efficiency and less heat then the third generation i5 is the way to go and the next question comes from 007 memx. Uh, Hi Ranjit, what laptop would you recommend me for gaming uh, with the least possible price? Dad gave me a budget of rupees 60,000, but I would prefer a laptop of approximately 45,000. Your reviews and other videos are awesome. Uh, the thing is that I do not review laptops, so I cannot give you a specific, uh, what do you say, brand or a model because I generally do not like to comment about products that I have not tested. But I would say that go with an i5 processor based uh, laptop and also make sure that you have a decent uh, graphic card like uh, what do you say uh, at least uh, on the Nvidia side uh, GTX 550 mobile or something like that. Uh, if any of you guys are already using a decent laptop that is also good for gaming in the price range of about 45,000 to 60,000 please share uh, your opinions in the comment section below it will be highly appreciated. And the next question comes from uh, ABLDR26 and he asks me, 
Hey Ranjit, I have mentioned before I am building a PC. So can you uh, give me a suggestion on the heatsink I should buy? I will be overclocking an i7 processor that's a 2600K to 4.5 GHz or more. Generally, I uh, prefer air cooling, but as uh, you have mentioned that you'll be overclocking up to 4.5 gigahertz or even more, I would seriously consider uh, what do you say water cooling. And for your needs, I would suggest the Corsair H80 or the H100. These are very good coolers, and that should uh, help you to overclock your 2600K processor. I hope this info helps. And the next question comes from Ramis. Uh, uh, and he asked, Hi Ranjit, I'm a fan of your videos. Thanks. Nice presentation. Please uh, try to clarify my do uh, doubts. What is meant by a hotspot, Wi Fi hotspot? What are the benefits of using a hotspot? Which are the third party hotspot software available on the web? Uh, wi Fi hotspot is nothing but let's say you have a 3G dongle. And uh, using that, you can get internet access on, let's say, your laptop or something like that. But now, let's say you have other devices also, like a tablet or an, an Android phone, and you also want internet connection on the same. By using a Wi Fi hotspot, uh, for example, on your laptop, now your uh, laptop will act like a wireless uh, uh, router and then it can transmit Wi Fi. And that is simply a Wi Fi hotspot. Uh, you get uh, third party softwares. Uh, uh, like Connective 5 uh, for Windows, which are free, which can do this. I hope this info helps. And uh, the last question comes from GV Ganesh. Hi, I want to know which is the best Android tablet with phone functionality and with good battery life. Something like the Google tablet hardware configuration. Uh, the thing is that uh, GV Ganesh, I haven't tested uh, any of these Android tablets which have the phone functionality. So I cannot comment about the same. So if any of you uh, guys are already using an Android tablet that has phone functionality and you feel it's good, please share uh, your opinions in the comment section below. It will be highly appreciated. So these were the questions for the 17th Q&A session. If you would like that I answer some of your tech related questions, please post them below in the comment section and start it with the Q&A tag. That's it for now. This is Ranjit from tech2bus.com and I hope to see you in my next video.